and thank you so much for joining us today for the webinar Prophylaxis to Periodontal Therapy Update on an Optimized Workflow. It is a great pleasure to introduce to you Tracy Lenneman, who is an international professional speaker, trainer, published author and coach. She has been a practicing clinical periodontal dental hygienist since 1986 in the USA and in Europe and is co-author of the new book First Aid for a Wounded Dental Business. Her aim during this presentation will be to show how preventive measures and non-surgical periodontal therapies can be successfully implemented based on an effective treatment plan. We would like to thank Tracy Lenneman for being with us today and our sponsors, Kevo and Care, for making this lecture possible. Please take note of any questions and comments you have during the lecture, as they will be addressed by the speaker at the end of the presentation. Without any further delay, please help me welcome the expert herself, Tracy Lenneman. Hello, good day. Thank you for joining us. Okay, um, yeah, as uh, our introduction said, I have been uh, clinically practicing dental hygienists uh, more in the perio department for uh, 30 years now, so, uh, and, always, and still active with it. And so what we thought about doing today for the presentation is um, all of us have some type of prophylaxis concept that we're using and that we're working with. And what I want to do is I just want to kind of review some things of why we do what we do. And sometimes we kind of forget about it. We just get so focused in working on uh, the patients and getting their teeth clean and healthy that we kind of forget why we do it, maybe we skip a few steps, and it's sometimes really good to just kind of review what we do. And then also what we want to do is um, I'll show you maybe some products that you didn't know existed through Cable Care and some things that can make your or help you with your work and your treatments to be more effective to um, not only with you as a clinician but also for your patients too. And just give you some ideas and tips and tricks to kind of, well, Make, make it a little more fun and more effective with your workflow. Uh, first of all, I want to start off with just a few little facts of what we do know that uh, some of the research has showed us that 15 to 20 percent of the world's population are affected by periodontal disease. Uh, that is a very, very, I would say, low percentage. From my opinion, what I've seen around the world, I would think that it's much, much higher than that. Half the population has some degree of gum disease, absolutely, if not more. And 83% of some people have signs of gum disease, with two-thirds having visible plaque at least one of their teeth, one of the studies showed us. That 45% of those sampled in another study, um, periodontal pocketing was at four millimeters as a minimum. And, um, and then many practices, and we're talking worldwide here too, many of the dentists don't even inspect their patient's gums. They're mostly focused on the teeth. And so it's really important to have an overall concept in the practice, whether you're the dentist doing your own hygiene and perio, or you're working together with a dental hygienist, therapist, prophylaxis assistant, depending which country that you're in. What's really most important is our role as a team together. It's not just one person's responsibility. Me as the hygienist, they just don't send them to me and, and I'm responsible for this, that part. It's about everybody in the team understanding the health of the patient. And I wrote a note here too that is saying that the first and foremost thing is that the patient understands why has this happened, what's happened, how's it happened, and what they can do to reduce the signs and symptoms of the disease or, or help to kind of stop it, reverse it, control it. It's not so much the treatment itself on the first, it's the first that the patient identifies that they have this problem. So let's take a little, a brief quick look at just prophylaxis to non-surgical periodontal ther therapy. Here are just some steps for success that I put together. Let's go back to what we know. We know that plaque is pretty much the culprit. But not necessarily the plaque is the culprit, it's how the body reacts to that plaque. We know that plaque is a biofilm, okay? It releases various inflammatory reactions. Sometimes you have patients with high amounts of plaque, but very little problem. And then you have the other patients who absolutely are the perfect at their home care, but they have lots of inflammation and infection still, and so they have to struggle through that. 
we do know that plaque maintenance, biofilm maintenance is definitely a critical part of periodontal treatment and maintenance. Just to review from our biofilms, we know that plaque are biofilms because they're communes of hundreds of different types of species living together in a community, each one having a specific goal. When we look on the list here, we see that they're individual cells in our mouth. And when they sit on the glycoproteins on the teeth, they actually build these communes of these bacteria, these making biofilms. They send signals, and sometimes some get signals that say, hey, you've got to move. And what they've also found on the picture on the left is you see what's green is living, what's red is dead. So when you take a cross-section of one of these biofilms, you may find after fluoride treatments, after chlorhexidine treatments, antibacterial treatments, microbial treatments, the outside you have killed the cells, but inside they're still living. And these are specific to the anaerobic bacteria living deep down into the pockets. So this is a big part of what we do, is trying to break up these colonies and get them into single cells, and then your antimicrobials are going to work a lot better for you than just trying to fight them as a big group in one. We also know that biofilms travel through the body, okay, and they form together in different parts. And so we know that you swallow these bacteria, you inhale the bacteria, you can actually transfer the bacteria in through kissing, and we know that these bacteria affect every single part of the body. So there is some type of a bi-directional link with them. Our specific bacteria we want to fight within their periodontal disease, which actually have um, kind of released that more of that, that um, infectious um, reaction, inflammatory reaction, are your gram-negative bacteria. Okay, and um, sometimes I do like to take one of these tests just to see after I've been treating a patient for about a year, to see have we changed some of those bacterial levels. We know that we can't kill all the bacteria in our mouth. We need this bacteria in our mouth for the digestion of our food and our immune system. It's just if the imbalance is out, you've got more negative bacteria, more bad bacteria than good bacteria, that's what we want to do with our treatments is help to restore this balance for the patient and help them understand that too. We know there's a periodontal link to the bacteria to the bacteria in our mouth, especially uh, some of the science has showed us as multifactorial connections in three per different groups. They've actually isolated these from local factors to primary host factors to systemic factors. These are factors that absolutely needs to be recorded in your uh, health histories and know which patient has which problem or which multifactorial connection there. This will help in our our treatment planning. The local factors, these are environmental predispositions. These are some factors we actually can do something about as a clinician and of course the patient too, meaning the teeth, the tartar, the calculus. I like to tell the patients it's too stone because believe me, sometimes it's like a stone removing it, to um, the black, plaque and the biofilm working on this, the soft deposits to the hard deposits, the inflation, the bleeding, how that patient's reacting to that improving their hoard, their oral hygiene, and getting them to come in for regular visits. Other local factors that we do can and can have some influence on are also lifestyle habits. Help them understand that smoking is a big causative factor, a factor on gum disease, diet, stress, alcohol, um, how bad breath is a sign of active gum disease with a poor home care helps exacerbate some of these inflammatory reactions and neglecting dental visits. They all play a role and through educating our patients we can actually help them understand why this has happened and then get them to motivated to do something against it. Okay, Coffee, tea, and red wine, well this is the stain. This is the stain that comes and may, a lot of patients come specifically for this problem. Not understanding that, that this is more just an aesthetic effect the stain on the tooth doesn't really have any um, real factors involving in the inflammatory effect. So it's helped them understand it's not just coming to get your teeth whiter, it's about the health of the gums and having that all play the role together. Knowing that also you've got to talk to your patients about smoking sensations. So talk to them about the number one causative factor is definitely smoking. Okay, we know, and these are some statistics from actually Britain, 
Um, in other countries, there are higher ones, that it's sixth of the population smoke. And what's really interesting, two-thirds start between the age of 18, 11 to 15 being the most popular group. We've also seen a huge, huge increase in these e-cigarettes also, but we don't have any, a lot of long-term studies seeing how it actually affects the periodontal tissues. There's a few coming out that has shown some information. Um, men, 32% uh, are young men, and uh, about 25% are young women. What's very important to understand that if a person smokes more than 10 packs of cigarettes per year, they've increased the periodontal pathogens in their mouth by 18 times. So, and then they have a lower healing capacity. So for the whole, not only your gingival tissues, but your whole body. So you've got a compromised immune system now for smoking. And we see a lot of that effect in the mouth with the tissues. Then we also know there's a lot of influence on the teeth and the tissues through, of course, your diet and dry mouth. The drier the mouth, the more aggressive the periodontal pathogens. Of course, we all know about poor oral hygiene, diabetes, relating then to heart circulation, weight gain, bone, joint problems. That all kind of plays into a role. And it's incredible how much we find in our mouth first of the effects. So those are all local factors. It's really important to talk to the patients about. The next factors are primary host factors. Now, these are factors we can't really do a lot about, but it's real important that we understand which ones are there. And this is how the potty changes according to their, their, um, how the body reacts to medications they're taken. And here's a big long list of some proven medications that show gingival changes in the mouth or how the body um, yeah, reacts to inflammation. A little bit more than if somebody wasn't taking these medications and don't forget the natural medications just because they're natural and plant based doesn't mean they have the same changes in effect on your body some people think plant some people synthetic but it's still making a general change to the body so here's a few lists on the list there well you're gonna find out that the body is gonna react to it and change too so you might have a little bit more exacerbated uh, exacerbated inflammatory reaction for this and they will cause reactions to the body and these are some things swelling edema through arthritis and different things like that and that's where we actually see it into the periodontal tissues too if the patient isn't coming regularly doesn't have very good uh, good home care perhaps poor home care etc and then of course the long list of our systemic problems where we know there's definitely a link to periodontal disease, to inflammatory uh, conditions in your mouth. And this is, list is ever growing. Number one being diabetes. Uh, it's over 40 years in research showing that's a bi directional effect. So some types are able to, and when you get a healthy mouth, it's easier to regulate blood sugar and vice versa. If you don't have a healthy a mouth, then you're going to have a more of an uncontrolled diabetes. And these are on just certain types, not all types, but there is a bit of a bi-directional relationship to that. And then the next one being cardiovascular disease. So we all know interleukin ones, so higher amounts of P. gingivalis. So you can have with, um, with, with oral disease, you can have an increased risk, uh, risk for heart, a disease, heart attack if you have some heart problems. We know that periodontitis is inflammatory disease, and it's really important to explain that to our patients. They understand that. So the first thing you can do in, in optimizing your workflow is think about the integration. The first is integrating the patient into a communication concept, a consultation concept of why has this happened, explain to them why this has happened, and then what we needed to do to get this stable and what they need to do at home. What's also important then you have updated procedures and newer technologies. We want to focus more on quality instead of quantity, prevention for persons versus repair. Give that patient a good feeling to come into the office and build trust with them, that they understand that the time and money they're investing you is, is well invested. Okay, so for your dental assessments, we always want to make sure health history, every year we take a new health history, we want to see what's changed, what medications they are, their general health, whether they're hospitalized, etc. I think you all should know that. We look at x-rays, and then we want to check some conditions for mobility, tooth, uh, tissue conditions, and etc. plaque index, your BOPs, and things like that. We know that in our mouth there's only two dental diseases. We only have two, and that's it. 
And it's important to educate your patient about that. The first one obviously being decay, that's what we see at a young age. There is a long list of different bacteria that, that influence this. Um, the streptococcal mut mutans being our first one, our main one. But what's important with the decay, whether you see it in a younger person or you start to see it in an older person with root decay, is the age of the patient, which risk factors do they have. Not only are we looking at the risk factors from periodontal disease, we're looking also at risk factors from decay. We want to put those patients in a, in, in a risk assessment category also. Find out where is the decay at, why is it happening, and look for different treatment options. Within the company with Cavo Care, what they have is Cavo has the Diagno Dent. Maybe some of you have already seen this. It's, it gives you early detection of decay, decay and helps you put that patient in to a risk category group better. It gives a value through laser fluorescence. It's a kind of it has a computerized analysis for you, what you're going to see down here, and give you some treatment risks and some options as far as should you maybe do a sealant? Is it what level is it at? Um, is it just in the enamel or has it gone down into the dentin? Maybe enamelplasty. Just gives you a whole bunch of different ideas, and that's something you can continue to look at. What's really important to know is before using the Diagno Dent, your teeth has to be clean beforehand before you use it because it can give you some false positives. It's that sensitive that it can actually give a, a reading or beep on um, some stain. So it's really important to make sure that you've got it all clean and then you're going to do your assessment after that. So it's a great one to integrate into your prophylaxis concept that if you find after the teeth are clean and you see some staining or something on the teeth, you know, after it's been removed, then you go ahead and check it and see, okay, is it, is it you know, how deep is it? And should you just keep controlling it? Maybe do some extra fluoride treatments with it. And it's a great motivating factor for the patients too. Another new innovation, this is pretty cool, is the DiagnoCam. This uses transillumination, as you can see in the bottom picture here, over the top of the tooth to actually illuminate it and to see if you can actually see some of the decay in there, not affected by the stain or the calculus, so you can use it like, it's almost like an, an x-ray for diagnostics and approximately, and it's an x-ray without the x-ray. So it's quite a, a very unique um, up kind of new technology that you can actually look at uh, for the patients too. High risk car caries, what we suggest for those is um, the CARE has a, a, a product, Trifluoroclean, and it's used for, it's a, a silicate used for cleaning and fluoridation. It's used to activate the enamel surfaces um, with three fluoride complexes, sodium fluoride for intensive immediate fluoridation, with added depot, that means it's a long, it works prolonged effect, the calcium fluoride does, and it's delayed, so it keeps delivering those fluoride ions, and then also has a catalytic effect with their mineralization of caries lesions. So this is a great product to use for those patients of yours who have high-risk caries, especially your patients, your older patients with root decay and, um, and your younger ones with more active decay. Now, the second dental disease, as we know, is periodontitis. So, um, and the main group we have, this is our red complex with our PG, TF, TN, and, and things like this. What they're doing now is they're saying the keystone pathogen, which would be Porphyrmonas gingivalis. This is a keystone pathogen that you see in most of the inflammatory reactions, most of the periodontal disease patients. And this is the main key pathogen that you also see connected with some of the systemic linked diseases. So this is one that we're really trying to fight a lot. Now, when we look into our goals of non-surgical perio, what are we trying to do? What are our goals with this? Well, we want to suspend the factors that lead to the inflammatory reaction and the destruction of the PDL. So that we want to change the biofilms, restore this balance from a gram negative to bring more gram-positive anaerobes in there and to try to help to get a balance in there. We want to help the patient maintain that area and whatever we can do to help regenerate the epithelium, long junctional epithelium, and, and reduce that active loss of attachment is what we try to do within our treatments. The first thing what we need to do is we need to focus on the disruption of the biofilms, break up these colonies, attack the cells, and reduce those populations. And we do that, obviously, through proper oral hygiene 
and through integration of antimicrobials. So let's go a little bit about back to basics, how to recognize the signs of disease and give us a better diagnosis of it. So for your overall assessments, first of all, try to remember what the four parts to the periodontium is. This is what we're trying to restore. This is what we're trying to, to uh, regenerate and stabilize the periodontium. So what are our four parts of the periodontium? Okay, do you remember? First of all, we've got the cementum, the root surface. You've got the alveolar bone, we've got the periodontal ligament, and then the fourth part is we have the gingiva. Okay, so we want to focus on these four, four parts. As we said, it's really important to go through your dental exams and your diagnostics. This helps us understand where that patient is in in this. And this is a little list I put together, you know, from your health history, your meds taken, what's changed, when was the last time they had some x-rays, and sometimes you can just take bite wings and you can still see the, the, the depth of the pocket. And that's enough. You don't really necessarily need to do a full mouth if it's just more of a control. Look at the soft tissue, the mobility, bleeding on probing. Yeah, you know all this. So it's just remember how you're doing it. That's the most important thing. Okay, so with the x-rays, a couple things I want to stress is um, since we have the PANS or we have the OPGs, however you like to call them, whichever unit you have, sometimes digital, it's nice to get an overview. This gives us a very good overview to see if we have any error or cancer. We can do those checks. We can check a little things this way. But if you're actually doing the periodontal treatment, I find them they're not detailed enough. So I do like to go into individual PAs. This is where it can show me where a piece of calculus is. It can show me what type of pocket is in there. If it's a three-quarter pocket, okay, if it's more of like a skull, so like a, um, a bowl effect type, and this is what I can actually show the patient, is this is what's going on. See that piece of calculus? I need to get in there and clean this up, and then I'll teach you how to take care of it, because this means the bacteria is getting underneath that, a two stone there, and it's eating your bone away. So put it in simple terms where a patient can understand it. And then, you know, if it's a new patient and they have quite deep pockets, then I like to get a full mouth series. This just gives me a good overview at the very beginning what's going on and what I have, you know, for treatment planning, how many treatments I'm going to need, etc. Now, your periodontal status is also, when was the last prophylaxis? How often does the patient come? Did they ever have a treatment problem? Um, you know, or, did, or sorry, did they ever have a periodontal treatment at all? And what's their motivation toward it? Most of them are quite scared, but it's just a step-by-step -step where you can actually get them to comply. Um, look at the inflammation in the gingiva. I give the patient a mirror and I show them when I'm doing this. I'm showing where the plaque is. Um, I'm always integrating that patient to the whole thing, to the whole treatment that they understand. This is why it's bleeding. They can feel it when I go with this small explorer and I just can feel down into the pocket and they can feel it jump over the, the calculus. Show them what the pocket depths are. Show them when the tissue is really red. These are important. Also, help understand and look from your own point, is it more of a hard deposit problem or is it more soft deposits? We know this one is a lot easier to treat. Actually, that's really, really fun to treat. I know we're all kind of strange, but, <laughs> but anyway, this is really fun to treat. And you know that this patient's never really had their teeth cleaned, but when we get that cleaned up, we got some good home care, you just have some inflammation of where the deposits have been. But once this gets cleaned up, this could turn out to be a really nice, healthy mouth as opposed to somebody who has more a systemic problem and more of this inflammatory reaction, which takes a little bit more time to do this patient. Remember what our seven signs of periodontal disease are also. That's very important. Look, every time you have a patient, look at these seven signs. What are the seven signs? Well, first of all, the gingivitis, the bleeding, the red tissue, and the swelling. This is the first sign that we have. Then we move into increased pocket depths through bone loss, mobility. Don't forget migration. The teeth start to move apart from each other. And the last one is obviously halitosis, an active sign of an active pocket. Our two goals from periodontal therapy, reduction of the inflammation, the biofilm management. Now, everybody's really, really focused on biofilm management, and that's fine and good. That's where we want to restore these levels. Okay, and restore bacterial balance through mechanical and chemical disruption. But the other one that's really important is don't forget, after you get that done, you want to focus on the pockets. You want to focus on that reattachment of the long junctional epithelium and any of the PDL that might be there, some of the, from the fibers of the PDL. 
reattachment and, gen and regeneration through root planing. Now, this is our goal is to get this whole area too. So don't forget, you've got a second part of what you're doing. So once the patient has good home care, get back on it and do the root planing to help the patient um, understand that now we're, we've got to try to regenerate this and get this stabilized. Okay, And this is the area where we're working on. This is where a pocket, an active pocket is down here. And we want to reestablish this long junctional epithelium through the root planing. So what we do in our actual treatments is through the prophylaxis and periodontal therapy, we've done their assessment. We know the patient has a problem. We've communicated that to them. Now we start moving into the treatment, the ultrasonics, the subgingival calculus, super and subgingival. We move into the hand scaling, the power scaling, the polishing the home care, and the intervals of the, of the recall. Our goals within the prophylaxis are removal of the hard deposits, the tartar, the calculus, anything that's hard first. Then, and some of the soft tissue comes off. Then the next thing is focusing on the soft tissue, the stain, the plaque, the biofilm, helping the patient with their home care. Then we want to move, when that's clean, we want to start focusing on also the fluoridation, any hypersensitivity, and start working on that also. Your second phase of your workflow, remember the first is the integration, the integration of your assessments of the patient, the how, when, why, what. Now we're coming to the actual treatment, and that's your, your second phase is actually your scaling, whether it's power scaling or manual scaling or the combination of both of them. Now don't forget, it's really important to know which type of power scaler you're using. Okay, From cable, you have your Soniflex, which is an air scaler. That's the one that works with about 8,000 hertz. That means when you turn it on, it goes ee, and you can hear it because it's an auditory frequency range that you can hear. It has an oval movement, so you can use every part of it. But never, never, never use the tip of any type of power scaler. You're going to do damage to your tooth surface. Your magnetostrictive, okay, is your 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 older type from from Dentsply, your slim lines and your older ones, and magnetostrictives, and this has an elliptical effect where you can also use the whole part of it. And the other one, um, this is more in the 90s, this is, this is a more of a newer type of technology. This is the piezo. And the piezo is a lineal effect, back and forth. So that means you have to use just the sides of it like you're using a scaler. If you try to go around a tooth and you don't turn it, it's going to hammer the tooth and it's going to hurt the patient. So you have to make sure you adjust it properly. So just think of it as you're using all of these just like your hand scalers. Then you won't have a problem with them. With your Soniflex, there's a video, and your Soniflex is going to show you how you're going to use it. And you can see when the video starts, I just use the first two millimeters of it, and it's just like I'm actually using a scaler. And it does a great job. So I'm going to take it subgingival. I'm going to use from a, from a down in the bottom, so come from the bottom of the pocket and use it up. Then I turn it and just use the side of it first two millimeters of the side of it and then you can back and forth to get some of the stain so it'll make it easier for air polishing later and use it one to two millimeters just use it like you're using a scaler it's not meant to be used really fast or really hard that's what hurts the patient and then they don't like it use it very fine it's a great effective tool to use another here's another one that you can put on your sony flex this is actually a, a plastic tip and you can take it around the area of crowns of veneers and your implants and it is a great tool for using for biofilm maintenance and light calculus also for removal so this is a perfect case where you can use it at and you're not going to scratch anything especially on these type of cases you're not going to want to use a metal tip it's perfect also for your implants and remember the best thing to use with implants are your plastic instruments because they're not going to scratch or going to do any problems. And actually, it should just be a biofilm removal. You shouldn't have to be removing calculus and tartar on an implant. If you do, then the patient's got something wrong, and that implant is moved into periimplantitis. So try to get the home care great, and then use your plastic instruments for your implant maintenance. For your normal tips, absolutely every company comes with a card. Whatever company that you're using, they come with a card, and you've got to measure your tip. If your tip is missing the first, first two millimeters, you're damaging the tooth. Okay, It's not working effectively. Power scalers work with the movement of the first two millimeters. If it's missing, throw that tip away and get a new tip. 
You've got to do that just like we do with hand instruments. You've got to get them uh, effective and have the tips working. You know, with hand instruments, you can sharpen them. These you can't. These you have to throw away and get your new tips. So everybody should, if anything is a take home from today is look at your tips. Measure your tips just to make sure that they're, they're not doing damage for you. Then you're going to combine your hand scalers and your power scalers. Now there's a whole bunch of different instruments. Um, I have some instruments here I like from Hugh Freedy. I have kind of a basic set that are some universal scalers and some uh, so scalers and universals uh, carrettes and for fine work. And then I use my Gracies, my after fives, and my regular Gracies for the deeper root planing uh, um, root planing ther uh, therapy. And, um, and then what I like to do is I like to, t to rinse with um, H2O2 and get a nice bubbly effect afterwards, an oxygenation effect, and then I take a little brush with a suction and then take out all the granulation tissue. So this just makes a really nice clean effect when we're done. And plus I test out which you know, proximal brush is good to use there. Um, for your implants, CARE has a plastic instrument, and you can see here from the bottom that if you're using any kind of metal on your um, not only on the, the titanium part, which hopefully the titanium part is integrated under the tissue or you've got your implant integrated into the bone, but anything that, that is on the metal or some of the superstructure, you're going to get some scratching. So it's better to use something that's more plastic. Remember, our focus here is removing the biofilm around the implants. What you can do, what the Diagnodent also does, is they have a tip that after your root planing and scaling, you can actually test to see if there's any deposits left there. And um, that will actually beep and give you a sign if something's in there. So that's kind of a multi-purpose, not only for decay, but you can also use it for your perio of the sapphire tips. Now let's move into the third point. We have our cleaning, and that's the stain and biofilm management. Now this is a big part of what we do, is that. And um, remember, our biofilms have this this effect. They build and then they release and then they build and they release. So our whole thing is to, to change that and break that all down with those biofilms. And a big part of what we use is air polishing. If you don't have air polishing today, we've been working with air polishing. I've been working with air polishing since 1988. So many, many years I've used every different type of unit, every different type of powder up there consider myself kind of air polishing queen of Europe. <laughs> um, I love air polishing and I couldn't work without it. And what I want to do is show you some of what products you should be using out there for which cases. Now obviously if you're in this upper, um, upper right section, this picture here, you're not going to remove that with air polishing. You're going to use your ultrasonics. First you're going to do your hand scaling and then you're going to use your air, air polishing last. This is where you can see down here, get a nice effect. So it still works with heavy stain removal. It works with light stain removal. We now have powders for biofilm management, for implant maintenance, and some that actually have a little bit of remineralization properties within them. From all the different air polishing powders out there, um, what's important is to understand there are, very, there are different ones. You've got your sodium bicarbonates, are super for are, work great for your super gingival for your stain and you also use it for sealants we don't use pumice and a, and a prof and a brush anymore we just use straight air polishing air polishing clean it all up wash it off and then do your etch and then go for it so um and this has been in the research since 1994 so if you're still using a cup and a brush or you know, sorry a profi brush and paste you're old school. You need to get yourself updated. This is where you can use the super gingival, your bicarbonates. Your calcium carbonates is also for super gingival, but these are um, smaller particles. I'll show you in the next slide what that looks like. Um, aluminum trihydroxide, uh, this is one from Dent Spli. There's not a lot of research to follow up this one, so only stay super gingival, um, and it's not something I recommend, but that's me personally. Uh, glycine, this is you can use it for super and subgingival. It works great on uh, implants and high quality uh, restorative materials and Perio Plus. So these are some, these are here, these are Perio Plus and the glycine ones. And this is what we're using subgingival. Okay. Um, your calcium carbonate, as I mentioned, this is uh, offered through Cable Care. 
And it, what it is is the round forms of calcium carbonate. What it does is there's no sodium, so you can use it for your patients who are uh, have um, sodium. They're on low sodium diets. And there's no salty taste. It has a bit of a whitening effect in your mouth. There's a little bit more powder in your mouth, but it's actually the calcium that's going to give you a tiny bit of remineralization property with it and give you a very nice cleaning property. I do recommend, though, after you're using this, is to use your hand polishing afterward to get a nice a nice smooth effect over your teeth and deliver some fluoride ions onto the teeth okay what's really important if you're using the calcium carbonate or you're going to your profi pearls are going to use your sodium bicarbonate is always spray away from the away from the gums we don't want to go subgingival the particle sizes are too big to go subgingival we want to keep it mostly super gingival in this one so here's a video that I can show you of how you're going to do it, how you're going to angle it. You can angle it, you know, so anywhere from 60 to 90 and kind of do small circles. You can angle it in between the teeth. And then you're going to obviously have your section as close as possible, if not from the inside and section right across from it. And you can see it's going to give a nice effect. You're not touching it to the gingival surface at all. Okay, so it's going to work really lovely that way. Okay, now after you've done the, the polishing of the stain, now we're going to talk about the biofilm. Now the biofilm is what you're mostly going to use is your glycine. Your glycine is, is labeled as perio, and the glycine is uh, building blocks of protein, amino acids. They're rounded par particles, and they will actually bang into those, those communes of those biofilms and break them all apart. So then when you're finished with your treatments, then you can have them rinse with chlorhexidine or peroxyl or whatever you want to have your antimicrobials, which now the cells are single cells, and you're going to be able to kill those and change that microbial level and change that balance of those anaerobes to aerobic bacteria too. Okay, it's comfortable. You don't have to polish or do anything afterwards, and it's great for all materials, all restorative materials. So what you're going to do is you're going to angle it 45 degrees into the pocket, and you're just going to blow it around. Okay, for your subgingival air polishing, is make sure you don't have this tip too close. If you have it too close to the pocket, it's just going to spray back into your face, like here. So you want to try to make sure that you've got about a four or five millimeter distance, and then it's going to have a nice flow into your pocket, and then it's going to come out and straight into your suction. So that's going to be easier to use it with that way. What Kato does have, and I'm not sure how many of you have seen this, for your Proflex is it's a new tip. And this is really exciting because Here's a periodontal case for me. She's very healthy, she's great, but she does have this very deep pocket here. It's about a nine millimeter pocket in the back. And that's a very different area to get into. It's a tough area to get into with the normal tip. So what they have now is they have this perio, this Profiflex perio tip. And here's a video to show you how the perio tip actually works. And you just take it very gently into the pocket. If you can see this, let me turn the sound down a bit on the video. You don't need that. Okay, so you just take it in there, if you want to hear it a bit. And then you take it in there and see how I'm just going gently into the pocket and then I'm pulling it around the sulcus. Okay, and you just go very, very gentle. You don't want to go full on heavy with it. You just want to go gentle. And they've done, they've, they've made this so you can't really create an emphysema, so an inflammation, an embolism. Um, so you can take it around very, very gently around your crowns, around your margins. If you angle it 90 degrees, you're going to get stain removing properties of it because it's the direction of how the powder's coming straight out at it. So you're 45 into the pocket for your biofilm and you're 90 if you have any little stain. So sometimes you could do the whole mouth if a patient has full mouth restorative in there. You could do the full mouth with this little tip, which is quite, which is very, very nice and you can see uh, you're pulling a lot of bacteria out of here, and by putting this in there, it helps to, to remove it. Here's another great area for using the tip. So you can come it around it and basically take it around in this direction, and then you put it at a 90-degree angle, and you can use it for the stain on the root surfaces. Here's implants. You can see implants. Actually, what's interesting, if you're using zirconium, um, uh, zirconium oxide for your crowns, they don't really build plaque. These are normal teeth with lots of plaque throughout the day on them. And you can see there's very little, almost to nothing on the implants. So this is, you don't want to use anything really, really abrasive on here for your implants. 
Okay, and that's the whole thing. If you're using metal instruments, you're using metal on here, you're going to scratch that. And if you scratch it, then you've left an area for the biofilm to stick. So that's why you want to use plastic instruments. That's why you want to be using very um, non-abrasive materials to clean those areas up. Okay, and so you're just going to take it around the edge very slowly around and then just pull it around that it comes this way very gently and very easy. Oh yeah, my animation's going, but it's really slow. <laughs> okay, um, so here's another case. Now don't be shocked, this is a lady who's in her 80s. She's had these for ever, for these implants for a long time. And yeah, sometimes you're gonna get cases where they've lost a lot of the mucosa, but these are solid in there. Are you gonna scale? No, nope. you're gonna do anything with them? No, nope. it's just a biofilm. She's got pretty good home care. And this is absolutely where these tips, where this glycine works absolutely perfect on this area of something like that to maintain. Now your fourth step and your final step is your, is your polishing and your finishing up from your workflow. And remember, you just gotta go step by step, hard deposits, soft deposits, what are you working on? What are you mostly focusing on? Okay, and go step by step with that. And at the very end, it's nice to do this finishing, this nice polishing that we're going to do with a rubber cup, not a brush. A brush will actually increase the, the abrasive factor of your polishing paste. You want to use a cup plus a cup you can bend nicely. You want to make sure you're not using high speed or high pressure because you can do damage with your profi cup as with anything else. Okay, so make sure you're trying to keep it a low RDA, you know, an abrasive factor, keep it low and don't let it heat up. And this is from Cavo, and this is a fantastic piece, a hand piece. It's, um, it's called a Duratec, and it actually oscillates back and forth. It doesn't spin around, so it doesn't sling the poppy paste in your face and do a lot of saliva. It keeps an even movement, so it doesn't heat up. It doesn't fly around everywhere, and it just delivers the perfect amount of paste and the perfect temperature around your tooth. It's a fantastic um, handpiece to use if you don't have one. I suggest it. Trying it out. Your Profi Cups, what's also through Care, Cable Care, is they have different strengths, uh, different um, thicknesses and strengths. You've got the light blue ones or the softer ones. That's for people that have more of that thin tissue, really friable and a lot of bleeding. This is a softer one. Or you've got harder ones for more of a healthier gingiva and have a little bit more of the stain. You also have shorter ones to make it more possible to reach in buccal areas or the posterior of the linguals. And, um, and then the circumference of this, this edge right here, it actually bends. So you can come some gingerly about a millimeter into the sulcus, and they're 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 nice um, pieces to use. Um, also from the fashid, from the different <laughs> uh, from the different polishing, uh, we have our traditional Clinique Care has the traditional one. Remember, it starts about 35 abrasivity, and it goes down and smoother. So it's a one-stop shop. That means you're going to need one polishing paste. And you can take it from more of a more of a cleaning effect to a polishing fining effect. So you don't need three or four different types of polishing paste. You've got your one with light fluoride, one with no fluoride. You have actually green a green apple with fluoride, but no menthol for people that have maybe a menthol um, sensitivity to it. And then you've got kind of a berry one. These are nice for kids with fluoride and stuff. Um, and this is just polishing teeth with just the, the just with the Clinique polishing paste and not using an air polishing. So it does a really good effect for those who don't even have a polishing. You can see before and after effects how nicely it actually cleans up. You're going to get even better if you combine it with air polishing, but if you don't have an air polisher at the moment, this does a fantastic job of cleaning it. And then there's a special cleaning uh, polishing powder or paste with a very, very low abrasivity and um, this is for your implants and your high polished ceramic um, ceramics for that. Remember that after you're done you integrate your antimicrobials because now you've cleaned everything up. You've actually broken up those biofilm homes and now they're individual, they're individual bacteria which are more susceptible to the antimicrobials and you can do your fluoride treatment, your fluoride trays. Make sure you always actively involve your patient in their oral hygiene. I like to show them how to use it, give it to their hand in their hand and said, now you show me and teach them. And then sometimes they hold their hand and just teach them go around. That is the critical part 
of helping motivate your patient is teaching them how to take care of it at home. And I tend to like to do this at the end, as long as they don't have high gingivitis, that would start in the first appointment. But this is where I would go into them um, after every appointment, make sure that they are not missing and everything and they understand it. Um, so I show them their interproximal brushes, how they're doing that, or working with their uh, toothbrushes now. Sonicare, I like the, salt, the, the sonic technology. I love my Sonicare. Uh, what's really important when the video starts here, <laughs> as you can see, that it's really important your angulation on that. It has a fluid dynamic motion. It creates bubbles, and these bubbles smash into these biofilms. What's important is that you have to show the patient how to use it. Sometimes they just go in and just move it too fast, or they're trying to do it like a hand toothbrush. Have them bring their toothbrush with them at, to the appointments, and then actually say, I tell them, I say, show me how you're doing this, and um, show, me, show me how you're brushing and you're cleaning, and then, um, and then I try to correct that for them. So I uh, help them understand that. So hopefully it's not too much information. I haven't confused you. Um, sometimes we do that with our patient if it's too much. Obviously, these are this is not all done in one appointment. This would be a series of different appointments. So usually your first appointment is an hour for a massive debriefment, and then I'd bring somebody back for maybe another two hours for your root planing, and then a control or another hour for your polishing. Each patient's a bit different what you're going to do. I like to have the long appointments. I like to just, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. I bring the patient in for two hours and try to do as much as I can for those two hours. Then I send them home and then let them practice. And then anywhere from a couple weeks, I'll bring them back. What we do not do nowadays is quadrant dentistry. One hour, a quadrant stretched over a month or two months. That we haven't done since the 80s. You should be on your full mouth disinfection. Try to do as much as you can in one visit. Bring them back the next week if you need to and just continue on. Okay, remember your step-by-step -step approach, your therapeutic approach for your prophylaxis, your integration of your assessment, your, de your de um, detection and diagnosis. Uh, make sure you're explaining everything to your patient. Then you're going to move into your initial debriefment. Now remember this could be over just the first visit and then the second visit you work on the biofilms. It all depends. Everybody's different. So these are hopefully some things that are just giving you some tips and tricks of, of how to maybe optimize your workflow. Biofilm management, and then get into your polishing, your finishing, and remember, don't forget your home care involved in that. Okay, 70% of our new patients are from referrals. So what we want to do is make sure we build relationships with our patients and integrate a step-by-step -step workflow that the patient understands. This is not something we can just treat in a half an hour and be done with it. It's going to take a process there of getting it stabilized and then helping them to maintain it. So what we want at the end is happy and healthy patients that love coming to us. <laughs> OK, so and that they know for every problem that they have, we have a solution for it. So I hope I've showed you um, some maybe different tools, some different things. And um, let's get into the question. Thank you. OK, so Angel, hi. Thanks for the question. What are the real risks for implant users when your implant is scratched with a metal scaler? Well, I think, it, I think the big problem is, is, is where is it? Is the patient in, um, first of all, if the patient is healthy, they have a very healthy mouth, you shouldn't need a metal scaler. What, what are you scaling off? The plastic's fine for the biofilm, and if you're just using your, your airflow or your polishing, you shouldn't need that at all. So first of all, there's absolutely no need to do something if, if, it's not, if there's nothing there. Now, the next phase is you've got mucositis. Peri-implant mucositis is your gingivitis. So you're still dealing with soft tissue here, OK? Um, if there is calculus built, your tartar, your calculus on that surface, then you've got to figure out why is it there? Is it because the patient's not cleaning it properly? Maybe that tooth is already into peri-implantitis. Remember, peri-implantitis is starting to get into bone loss. And the question is, is it into the surgical phase? Have you lost more than two, three millimeters of bone on the threads? This is something that has to be surgically opened. If you're going to use metal scalers because you've got big chunks of calculus on it, OK, that needs to be in combination that eventually that patient's going to be surgically opened. Maybe the thread's removed, and they're going to do something for regeneration. The big problem is, is if you scratch them, you've opened up, you've made kind of a, a ridge 
or allege there for the biofilms to adhere to. Biofilms hate smooth surfaces. So the smoother it is, that's why we're into smoothing the teeth. We're, we want a smooth surface. And of your restorative materials, if it's smooth, they have a hard time sticking to it. If it's rough, they're going to stick stronger to it. So this is, is hopefully for you guys to understand that just stay away from those metal scalers um, because you don't want to damage what's already there. And the first question is, do you need it? There's so much overtreatment being done that you, maybe you don't even need to do that. You just need to help the patient understand that how they have to take care of it and do the biofilm removal. Oh, and here's another thing that's very important. It's a different course, but it's for you guys to understand. An implant does not build calculus, subgingival calculus. Tartar up above, calculus up above, okay, whatever supergingival, yeah, because it's in the environment and it's usually on the superstructure. But if it's down in a pocket, it's only soft tissue, it's only biofilm. It is not calculus. There's no PDL, there's no root surface, so it can't. And an implant has a bioactive surface, that's why. So hopefully that helps. Okay, so I just stay on the safe end and say keep it all plastic. How long are your appointments scheduled for? Um, that's a thanks, Wendy. That's a really good question. Um, I work in the UK. I work in Germany. I work all over. Um, and most of say say over in Germany and Europe, we're always we've always been doing our appointments. Um, I know in the UK sometimes they do half hour appointments. I like to have my patient for two hours if I can. A lot of them are scared. They're fine. It depends on who you're working with. Now, I work at a little bit different. I work in a practice in London, and we have three other hygienists, and they're doing most of the recalls. And if anybody more is perio involved, we're talking five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got a 13 millimeter pockets, you know, things like that. Um, then the patients will come to me for that. So they're already being maintained by the hygienist, and then they're coming to me for the deeper stuff. In another practice, I, I'm the only one, so I get the patients cold. So if the dentist, convince, the dentist needs to convince the patient to come to me for two hours, and then I'll start with usually ultrasonic. Uh, first of all, I do the education of the flip chart, the Oral-B flip chart of kind of explaining them the disease process. And then I'll go in, show them in their mouth, and then I start with the ultrasonic. So I do a full mouth debridement, super and sub subgingival, as good as I can. It sometimes takes a good half an hour to do it because you're not going to do it fast. You're going to do it like you're scaling. You do it very, very integrated and very gentle. And then I'll go in with some hand instruments. And depending, sometimes I can get it all. So it depends on how hard it is. And sometimes I'll say, okay, this is our first start, but I'm going to need to have you come back in a month, and we're going to follow up. And then at the end, I'll rinse and do the rinsing and everything, and then I'll have them with the home care. So, um, and then teach them their home care. So at least they've got this feeling that, wow, something's been done. Now, a lot of patients don't want the two hours from the beginning, and they're a little bit afraid. So I'll start them with an hour. What I never, never do is anything less than, a, than an hour at the beginning and at the initial therapy stage. And that could be up to a year of them coming every three months, two to three months. I will go to the half hours once that patient's stable, and all we're doing is biofilm maintenance. They're stable, we've got reattachment, they've got great home care, then I'll back the patient into a half an hour. Then that half an hour, I go through every pocket, I'll do biofilm removal, I'll do the air polishing, I'll check their home care, and, um, and that's where we can do it to the half an hour. But that's way down the line once we've gotten some resolution of it. So, so it's really individual, and it's important to talk to your patient about that and saying for them to understand, I'm going to need a series of appointments. But try to get yourself, if you're doing quadrant dentistry at the moment, try to get more into that full mouth debridement, okay, removing that down and with home care as much as you possibly can. If it's a lot on the teeth, then just do your ultrasonics and your home care, and boom, that's pretty much your hour. Then bring them back within a week to two weeks later, and then you can see how, after their home care, what they've brought down, if their inf infection, inflammation's gone down, and then you can get into the root planing. Okay? Remember, you can't really do really, really effective root planing if everything super gingival is not, you know, not at a good level. So it's all a bit, a bit different, but I, I love the two hours <laughs> if you can get the patient to come. So hopefully that, that helped you with your question. Okay?
Um, for anybody else that, out there who's interested, um, we did mention that we had a book called First Aid for the Wounded Dental Business. And what it is is kind of a workbook. It's a little story of how a business fails. And we've got a lot of tips and tricks in here. I've worked with a business coach of just how to analyze your practice. And we've got little pages, you know, at the beginning of each chapter of some things that you can go in and write your own notes and things on there. And it's just to see, are you bleeding any money? We've taken it more from your business is bleeding, it's sick. What can I do to optimize my business to not only optimize your workflow, but optimize your whole entire practice to see you're on the right track. And that is on Amazon too. So anyway, um, I don't think there's any more questions. So thank you very much for tuning in. And I hope Dave helped you. And um, we'll see you later. Thank you. Bye. We would like to thank our speaker for sharing her knowledge and expertise with us today. We would also like to thank our sponsor for making this online course possible and thank you, our wonderful audience, for your interest and participation. The CE quiz is now available online on the course page and completing it will allow you to earn your ADA SERP CE credits. The recording will be posted online within the next 48 hours. You will receive an email notification with a link to the recording. Thank you again, take care and goodbye.